Question 7 says, At rest, a car's horn sounds the note A, 440 hertz. The horn is sounded while the car is moving down the street. A bicyclist moving in the same direction with one-third the car's speed hears a frequency of 413 hertz. A is the cyclist ahead of or behind the car, and B, what is the speed of the car? In order to determine whether the bicyclist is ahead of or behind the car, we can use the Doppler effect. So, so the frequency uh, that the observer hears is equal to the frequency of the source multiplied by the velocity that sound travels plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity that sound travels minus the velocity of the source. Now you can do this and solve for it, but an easier way might be to think of this This is our car and it's moving this way and so this car at rest would have a frequency that is fairly even. Let, let's imagine that that's a perfectly even so the sound traveling in any direction whether it be up or down, left or right it's going to have even spacing between each of the waves but if it's moving in a certain direction then the spacing of the waves in front of the car are going to be closer together the spacing of the waves behind the car are going to be further apart because the the movement of the car compresses the waves together be in front of it and extends the waves further apart behind it so when the waves if they're all traveling at the same speed whenever they're further apart that's a lower frequency Wherever they're closer together, that's a higher frequency. The frequency meaning I see more of them in any given unit of time. So when they're farther apart, I would see less of them in any given unit of time. When they're close together, I would see more. So high frequency, low frequency. And so this frequency is the frequency that the bicyclist hears higher or lower than the car's normal frequency. Well, it's lower, so we would expect him to be getting this end of the frequency. If he's getting that end, and we know he's traveling in the same direction as the car, then he is behind the car. Which means he's moving toward the car, but the car is moving away from him. So any any increase in, in frequency that he would get by moving towards the, the source is being taken away from him because the source is moving away from him faster than he is moving toward the source. Now the problem asks in part B, what is the speed of the car? So we want to know the speed of the source. And so the source being being the velocity of the source right here. So we've got to solve for this velocity of the source. The problem is we don't know the velocity of the observer either. We just know that it's one-third the velocity of the source. So the velocity of the observer equals one-third the velocity of the source. Now here's the thing. Whenever the velocity of the source is moving away from the observer, the velocity of the source is negative. Now, whenever the velocity of the observer is moving toward the source, the velocity of the observer is positive. So this has to be a positive number. This has to be a negative number. In order to make that fit, we got to make this negative one-third. So the velocity of the observer is negative one-third the velocity of the source. And so we can plug, we, we can plug this equation in for the velocity of the observer. So I'm going to do that, and at the same time, I'm going to distribute my frequency of the source. So the frequency that the observer hears is equal to the frequency of the source multiplied by the velocity that the sound travels plus the frequency of the source multiplied by one negative one-third times the velocity of the source divided by the velocity that sound travels minus the velocity of the source. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this to the other side so that I have no fractions left. So I have the frequency of the observer times the velocity minus the frequency of the observer times the, uh, the velocity of the source is equal to the frequency of the source times velocity that sound travels plus negative one-third the frequency of the source times the velocity of the source. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add this term to this side so I can group the 
the velocity of the sources together, and I'm going to subtract this term to this side so that I can I can isolate velocity of the source. So what I get is a a positive one third frequency of the source. So I added this over to the other side, which changed the sign of it, times the velocity of the source minus the frequency of the observer uh, times the velocity of the source um, equals the frequency of the source times velocity minus the frequency of the observer times velocity. At this point I can factor out the velocity of the source on this side. I could also factor out velocity on this side if I wanted to, so I'll go ahead and do that. So what I get is the velocity of the source times one third frequency of the observer minus frequency or frequency of the source minus frequency of the observer uh, equals velocity times frequency of the source minus frequency of the observer. Now it looks kind of neat and and put together here you have minus signs on the same side in both places but I want to uh, point out that that's only going to happen because of how these objects are moving relative to each other so if they would have been moving towards each other it might have been that these are are moved around or the frequency of the observer is subtracted from or it could be subtracted in a different order it could be added together depending on the scenario every scenario is going to change how these things are added and subtracted together at this point so uh, I just say that in case a question like this happens on the test I don't want you to be looking for this nice neat little pattern. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is divide this over to this side. So I'll get that the frequency, the velocity of the source is equal to velocity times frequency of the, of the source minus the frequency of the observer. Divide it by one third times the frequency of the source minus the frequency of the observer. And so we've solved for the velocity of the source. This is the velocity of the car. So let's plug in some numbers and see what we get here. So we know that the velocity that sounds traveling through the air is 345 meters per second. And we'll say, we're saying that it's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so roughly, what, 27 degrees Celsius. That's what, um, in, in, on a normal day, that's how fast um, the sound is traveling. And so... Uh, we can multiply that by the frequency of the source, which we said that the frequency is normally 440 hertz. The, the observer heard 413, and so uh, and then we can divide that by the one, one third times the frequency of the source, which is 440. So one third times 440 minus 413. So the, the velocity of the source is equal to this. So this equals... Um, 9,315 on top and negative 266.33 on the bottom. And so we should get that the velocity of the source is equal to negative 34.975. That's what I got. So th this negative sign just saying that he's moving away from the observer. And so whenever it asks for the, the speed of the car, the answer is just, you just plug in the positive number. The, the absolute speed of the car is 34.975 meters per second.